Mina, Code Bonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Finished reading 1 Samuel 24, and I feel like I have more questions than truths to present, so let me present those questions to you, and it's not like I didn't get anything out of it. I mean, the story itself is very clear in what happened, and historically, how this part of David versus Saul's history went. So there's not really a question of, you know, is this correct? Is this right? What exactly happened? No, it's a matter of interpreting the events. Who, you know, who did right? Was this handled correctly? So to start this off, we're going to go to verse four. Well, actually, let's go with verse three first. So he came to the sheepfolds by the road. This he is Saul, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. Bathroom break. <laughs> David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. So Saul said, we don't know if it's number one or number two. I don't want to know. I have no interest in that. And this is David's cave where he and I doubt all 400 of his men were in one cave. Unless it was a really friggin' huge cave. Or if it was like a network of caves, then of course they could all be in there. But nonetheless, David and his men were there. Then the men of David said to him, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. Nowhere does it say that anywhere up to this point in Scripture. Where are they getting this from? Is this simply something... Like sometimes the Old Testament will mention a detail of, Hey, by the way, this happened. And then you go back several chapters and the incident was mentioned, but it didn't have this particular detail. Is this one of those? Or are these guys just making this up, encouraging David, kill him, kill him, take the kingdom, take it, it's yours, go for it. You know the Lord's anointed you, you know that this is your destiny, get him out of the picture. Go ahead and finish this off. Or was it an actual word from the Lord? Well, I don't know, because it's not mentioned anywhere. So do I take these guys' word for it? I'm not so sure. And I think in an instance like this, this is one instance where I need to say, this isn't necessarily what the Lord said. This is these men saying this is what the Lord said. Because the Bible oftentimes mentions something happening where it's something not good or it's something even horrible and horrendous. That doesn't tell us, you know, hey, this is what we're supposed to do. This is telling us this is what these men did. And here, this is these men saying this is what the Lord said. Since it's not recorded anywhere else in the Bible, I'm going to say... Is it possible the Lord said it? It's possible. It's also very possible that these men were simply using this as an encouragement to David, kill him, seize the kingdom, this is your chance. To which David responded, <clears throat> and David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. So, and then you go on and read the story and you see that David calls out to Saul, bows down to him, and says, I could have killed you, and I didn't. And that actually leads into another point, but I'm going to focus on this for a second. Um, if th that is indeed what the Lord said to him, what pleased David's heart was to spare him, was to not hurt him. If this isn't an example of loving your enemy back in the day where love your enemy wasn't a thing, I don't know what is. That is a beautiful Beautiful story, obviously. And of course, and then going into verse 6, um, and he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Could it have been more of a respect for the anointing and the office more than love? Possibly. But to not kill a man who's actively trying to kill you, I see that as love in David's heart. And God did say, I'm going to choose a man after my own heart. So here, my interpretation of the text is this is a great example of loving your enemy. Before this was even a thing to be done, before that was even biblically commanded of God's servants. So you go, David. I'll give you another thumbs up if my other thumb wasn't helping to hold this Bible here. That's just, that's amazing. And point number three, which is really interesting to me, and I'm not sure I entirely agree with it. Um, when David is talking to Saul in verse 10, Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you, but my eyes spared you, and I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Focusing on 
Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into my hand in the cave. I wouldn't say necessarily the Lord delivered Saul into, I don't know why my camera went out of focus there. I wouldn't necessarily say that the Lord delivered Saul into David's hand. Maybe he did. Maybe it was a test. Maybe it was in fulfillment of that word that was spoken earlier. I'm not sure. Again, I would say that this is David's interpretation of events. Not necessarily the Lord did deliver Saul into his hand, but that was David's interpretation of the event. Sometimes I'll hear people in my own Christian life and in my own church say, well, you know, the Lord did this and the Lord did that. And man, I'm so glad that this happened. God's really on my side. I think to myself, is that really God? Was that really him? You know it's God when his word directly says, this is me. Like, to use an example that people aren't going to be comfortable with, when God said through Moses, I want you to kill every man, woman, and child in Canaan, you know that was the Lord's will because God directly said it. And there are many other positive examples. That was the first one that came to mind, and in light of the war that's happening here, it makes a lot of sense. Um, as horrible, as much as you may hate it or disagree with it, that was explicitly the Lord's will, spoken by him. When the Lord doesn't necessarily speak, yes, he may have said it earlier, but since it's not recorded anywhere else, I'm, part of me does wonder, was that just the men encouraging him? But apparently, David at least agreed with the men that the Lord delivered Saul into his hand. And what David saw fit was to spare him. Did the Lord actually deliver him into David's hand, or was that simply David's interpretation of the events? I tend to think that that was simply David's interpretation of the events, and that it wasn't actually the Lord. Could it have been the Lord? Maybe. And of course, either way, what we are left, and a positive note to end this with, is something really beautiful happened. Let's say the Lord did deliver him into his hand. Let's say the Lord did speak this in advance, that the Lord would deliver, into, deliver Saul into David's hand. And David chose to spare Saul's life in respect to his office, and I also believe out of a heart filled with love. So that is, that's the one really positive thing we can take away from this. Still more questions open to interpretation, in my opinion. By all means, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave, leave something in the, um, in the comments section below. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.